Hello, it's Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada, and I am uh, standing outside uh, the uh, collision center that uh, I use for my cars, Cosmos Collision, uh, and they are also uh, certified to work on uh, Land Rover, Tesla, and Porsche, among others. And uh, I wanted to uh, do a series of videos on collision repair um, because I think that it's not that well understood uh, and, uh, and actually really quite important, especially when uh, safety is um, at stake. So I'll turn this camera around here. I'm just going to show you two different cars uh, that, uh, that show some of the deformable structures and, uh, and why um, one of them is, uh, cannot be repaired and why one of them can be uh, and, uh, and what to look for and why. Okay, okay so let's have a look at, uh, a look at this Porsche here um, closely. Um, obviously, it's been in a, uh, a front uh, three-quarter collision. Uh, we have the right side fender, uh, which has been stripped off the car, uh, as well as the headlights and the bumpers and so forth. So just looking at this car here, um, you know, this might be a, you know, I'm going to guess a, a $10,000 repair, uh, plus or minus. But this is an example of, 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 a, of a car that can be repaired, you know, I'll, I'll say as good as new, and that if I was purchasing the car and I had the photographic evidence of what was done and I had the invoices and I knew the shop that did it, I wouldn't actually be too worried about um, uh, any, any material or structural damage or lasting effects on the car. And the reason why is here. Um, when, uh, when the body shop took off the damaged panels, um, we can see that none of the mounting holes um, have been damaged or uh, dislocated. Um, this is the base of the uh, a, uh, a pillar, and we can see the tabs here, which then hold on the fenders, uh, were not tweaked or damaged at all, going right down into the bottom, okay? So this is a case where you just unbolt the damaged pieces, order the new pieces from Porsche, and then install them. And we have the, the front bumper, that's the rebar. It's not rebar anymore, it's an aluminum structure. And then the foam, so even the foam isn't damaged. Okay, so this car, even though you might look at, at the Carfax and you might see $10,000, I mean, maybe the, the Xenon lights on the car were, were $3,000. Um, you know, each fender might have been a couple thousand each. Maybe it's, maybe it's a $15,000 hit. But if I saw this, I would be satisfied uh, you know, providing I saw the finished article and the paint matched and so forth, that the car was not compromised. If this was my car and it was in it was in a collision, I would surely want to take photographs of the car in this state, along with keeping the detailed records of which parts were installed, so I could demonstrate this when it came time to sell the car or trade it in, that the frame rails and the unibody or monocoque structure was not compromised and it was simply a matter of bolting on new parts okay you could probably even argue that the car has improved because it has uh, <laughs> brand new parts and brand new paint in it okay so um not every collision is the same even even uh, at the same uh, uh dollar amount because let's say that we didn't have to spend you know, $3,000 on headlights or something like that, but let's say one of these areas was tweaked. Well then, you know, it's not the end of the world either, but I'd want to know more about it. You know, something like this piece here was not very easy to fix. Um, and I'd want to know what exactly was done to it before I made the determination whether, you know, I felt that the structure of the car was compromised. In this case, I would say that it wasn't. Now we go to this car here beside it, and, and, and this car is in a much more uh, serious impact to the same place, um, but you can see, you know, just it's fairly obvious that much higher forces uh, were at play here. And um, if we look at this car here, well, that is the longitudinal frame rail, which is not straight anymore, and it is bent at about a well, it looks like about a 30 degree angle, okay? And so you can see that this corner of the car was crunched and this frame rail took all of the impact, okay? So that should be 
straight and it's not. Now, um, the structure of the car and the deformable structure uh, of the car and how it absorbs impact, how it's designed to absorb impact, goes through every major and minor piece, every fastener. You know, it's a, it's a very, very um, precisely calculated uh, structural uh, deformation uh, uh, path, path, is that the right word? Um, uh, that the car goes through to absorb these forces. Each of these pieces is very precisely engineered uh, to uh, buckle at a certain point uh, and to be strong where it needs to be strong and to bend where it can absorb the, the forces. Um, even uh, things like the, the, the bolts here, like, um, I mean, that just, it, it isn't a normal steel bolt. For one thing, it's a lot lighter. Uh, also, it's designed uh, so that uh, it won't give rise to electrolytic corrosion where you might have an aluminum piece like this and a steel piece, okay? Uh, so if you put steel and aluminum together, um, uh, they will rust. They will, or rust isn't the right word, but they will corrode. And basically the aluminum will turn to powder. So all of these fasteners are specific to this car, or perhaps cars in the same family from the VW Audi group. And uh, they are uh, designed uh, with the right amount of uh, force um, and they're uh, designed to break away at a certain point and they're designed not to corrode okay uh, fasteners like this one um, are engine they're only one-time use and they're designed so that they cannot be over tightened um, and they're tightened via torque wrench to the to, to precise torque um, uh, settings and the bolt will actually stretch a little bit which means you can't use it again and uh, the design of that is so that uh, it'll slip before you put too much torque on it, okay? So um, with these uh, deformable pieces that you see here, this front crash support, um, they're designed to tear away at a certain point and the bolts have a certain composition, a certain design and certain specifications throughout, um, as do the rivets. I mean, in this car, like normally when you, uh, you know, aluminum is really hard to weld and so normally you bond or you rivet it together um, if you uh, have to repair it you have to drill out the rivets if you drill out the rivets normally what happens is you wind up um, enlarging the hole and then you need a bigger rivet um, if that makes any sense um, but with 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 Porsche for instance they don't allow you to do that there is a special machine that are a tool that they use to remove the rivets without enlarging the hole and a specific set of rivets that you need to use so as not to compromise the uh, the structure which is very precisely designed okay so you use this tool you pull out the rivet without enlarging the hole and replace it with the same diameter and the same strength rivets and not every rivet of the same diameter has the same uh, the same um, uh, torque uh, settings or uh, or uh, strength because some parts are designed to break away some parts aren't and for each application in each different spot there's a certain fastener that you need to use with very precise specifications on it to do the job that it's supposed to do all right so this car i guess is fairly obviously a right a write-off because this frame rail has been deflected probably six or eight inches um, the structure you know it used to be that everything was made of mild steel um, and then in the interest of uh of uh resolving the conflict between strength and weight um, then then uh, manufacturers started putting different uh, types of metal in the uh, unibody and so now we can have like five or six different kinds of metal whether they are mild steel or high strength steel or high strength lightweight steel or boron steel I mean there's almost an infinite number of compositions of steel and then you've got the aluminum and the aluminum can be in different thicknesses so they'll they'll take uh, the the strongest lightest material 
and 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 you know put it in the safety cage for instance but then other parts of the car which aren't, aren't load bearing will get a lower grade of steel or they'll get aluminum or another material so each part of this car um the structure of it is going to uh, be a little bit different and is going to behave differently and is going to absorb the impact a little bit differently also each different material has its own specifications as to how it is worked on. Um, the generally the the higher strength steel becomes more brittle, which means that you know if you had like a Ford truck and you had the mild well an older Ford truck actually because now they're aluminum, but if you had an older so an older truck and that was a frame rail, well you could bend that back out. If you if you tried to bend this. Um, uh, uh, unibody part out because it's made of uh, high strength light uh, light alloy steel um, uh, what would happen is it would just crack so the harder the material is generally the uh, less you're able to work with it the more brittle it becomes and the uh, and the easier to crack so this material here um, even if it was only out a few millimeters you can't repair it and since that is that this this frame rail is not bolted to the uh, firewall um, so that means this car is written off okay if you find a car with a salvage title well maybe they bought that car and maybe they just cut it and welded it a new piece and you've just destroyed all the crash worthiness of the car even though they could have lined it properly and all the parts might line up and the hood might open properly and the bumpers might fit the fact that they cut that frame rail and 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 replaced it dramatically reduces the uh structural integrity of the unibody and would make it way less safe in an accident okay so just because your salvage title car looks okay does not mean it has the same safety rating okay and so the manufacturers then are very very particular especially porsche about everything uh as small as you know uh making sure that the holes for the rivets maintain the same diameter making sure the exact type of fastener is used making sure that fastener is torqued up to the exact specification all of this requires um, uh, special tools, special instruction, special training, um, and the body shop that's used to work working on, uh, you know, uh, you know, domestic vehicles, for instance, will not have any of that. So they can fix it. They can get it to line up. They can pound it out, but they're but they're not going to have all the right tools and fasteners and so forth protocols or training to put it back together so that the car maintains its integrity and critically its safety rating okay and this is the stuff that's not that obvious uh when you look at a car that's been in an accident um you might you might just look at if the paint matches or the paint has any flaws or if there's any masking lines or if the panel gaps are straight and that's all important too However, the really critical stuff is what goes on underneath. So if you look at this car and it has a, a, a claim on it um, and, and you look at what happened to it and what was done to it, um, you, you know, you can be, you know, if you saw this, you'd be reasonably assured that the car will be back together and, and it will be literally as good as new. If you saw this, there's no way this car can be repaired. Uh, and have the same uh, structural integrity. Okay, so with that, I uh, hope that was helpful. Lawrence Romanowski here uh, from uh, Cosmos Collision, and I just thought I'd uh, go through these two cars with you.